Now, the, the next thing we do after we find out that we have enough travel in the head is we actually will surface the bottom of those electrodes. And how you do that is you'll take the pressure and turn it all the way up to zero on both knobs. And the, then you'll take your block, uh, a nice little block of plastic works great for this because it has a nice flat surface. And what you'll do is you'll place, you'll take your 600 grit sandpaper and place it on the block. When you put, when you push the pedal to bring the electrodes down, then you'll pull the block out with the sandpaper on it. And do that two or three times. And then you'll look at the sandpaper to make sure that the grooves are consistent. Both grooves look the same, or both uh, lines that, that mark on the sandpaper look the same. And then you'll know you have these electrodes perfectly parallel and uh, then the pressure will be consistent between the two and you'll get, again, more consistent welds. That's what we're shooting for, is something that's repeatable and easy to do. Um, at that point, once you've surfaced the bottom of those electrodes and uh, the weld head travel has been set, now you can go down and set that pressure. Again, I would, I would start at around 8 on each side and then see how the weld performs. And again, if you're getting um, welds that are not, not strong enough, there's two things you can do. You can adjust the power up or you can take the pressure uh, down, or maybe reduce the pressure. And the key is finding, uh, finding a, a spot where the weld is consistent with a, enough pressure to make it consistent, but yet, again, not too much to where you don't get a strong weld. So this is how I start. I'll take and uh, look back here at my power supply now. You've got your weld energy, which is your overall energy setting here and then pulse 1 and pulse 2 is how that energy is dispersed. Um, the reason why we have a dual pulse machine is so that you get, again, more consistent welds. Pulse 1 is designed to be a cleansing pulse or a, uh, a pulse that will basically ready the weld area for pulse 2 to come in and make the weld. So you never want pulse 1 high enough to actually weld the material together because then that will weaken the effect of pulse 2. So what we're going to do initially is we're going to turn pulse 1 all the way off. So it says off, so just turn, turn the knob down until it says off. And then we're going, we're going to adjust the weld energy by itself. We're going to start, uh, I like to start at about 120 watt seconds, so again you adjust the overall weld energy until you reach 120. And then pulse 2 will be all the way on. So just turn that until you see all 120 on there. Then I'm going to take a, a nickel tab and a battery. I'll turn my pulses on. When I press on the foot pedal, it will make the weld. And then I'm going to adjust from there. Once I get a weld that I, I like, if it looks good, then I'll come back and, and use pulse one. And again, once I find the energy, let's say 140 was the amount of energy that I found that was good. I would leave the weld energy on, on 140. I would come back and adjust pulse one second. So first thing you do is adjust the weld energy, then you'll come back to pulse 1 and turn it between 3 and 5. I, so I'll, I put it at 4 right now, and then turn pulse 2 all the way on. So you get all the rest of the energy in pulse 2. So again, that's, that's the method that you follow every time you change the energy. If you need a stronger bond, or if you want to turn the energy up, adjust the energy up, then, tur then tur turn pulse 1 to between 3 and 5, probably, you know, I'm at 4 on this one and then turn pulse 2 all the way on. And then you're ready to weld. Turn the pulses back on, then you tap the foot pedal, and that will initiate the weld. You know that your travel is perfect because you've set your stop nut up, up and again, you can adjust two things from here to get perfect welds. Either your, either your energy up or down, uh, or your pressure up or down, or a combination of the two. And in that way, you can get very consistent, reliable welds, and you'll be able to build battery packs in no time.